The next keynote is from Estonian architect Indrek Alman. He, he is a partner at Plus Architects based in Tallinn. His works and experiments on different sustainability issues have led him to analyze the reasoning behind the spatial decisions and propose solutions in city planning and in multimodal networks on a larger scale as well. Indrik has been multiple times a vice president of the Estonian Association of Architects and uh, the president of the Estonian Association of Architects in 2014-2016. In addition to Estonia, he has also designed buildings in Ukraine, Denmark, Latvia, Norway and Sweden. He has received numerous prizes for his creations both at home and as well abroad. He has been a finalist in the category of landscape architecture in the World Architecture Festival in 2012 and in Contemporary Architecture Prize of the U EU Mies van der Rohe, received prize for best construction of the year in Tartu in years of 2002 and 2006. Let's be in a search for a minimal footprint in mobility. Indrek, please, the floor is yours. Hello to everybody. I believe this is one of those times when uh, living paperless life can be complicated. Uh, therefore, I, due to the technology in hand, of course, and therefore I'm sorry um, if um, you allow, I will sit down. One and a half week. Uh huh. All right. Um, one and a half week ago, I was um, I was coming on a small boat. I was going on a small boat from my island home, island home to the mainland. It was a windy day, but there was nothing to uh, to predict that um, within. Um, next 15 minutes the wind speed will rise up to 28 meters per second reaching official storm level 10. Um, there was nothing to no forecast to predict that nothing uh, anything like that can happen and when something like that happens uh, there is actually a little you can do but pray um, luckily, my planned course was downwind, and um, after some remarkable hassle in a harbor during the morning, um, I was um, safe and sound with my family. The storm came out from nowhere and lasted only about an hour. Local harbor master later told me that um, he doesn't remember anything like that within his last 20 years of service. In that way, it was totally unprecedented for us. And it made me think, um, are we finally starting to witness the shift in the climate in this part of the world as well? It is clear that our decisions and selections, what we do, especially as an architect, have influence on the climate. But luckily, as there are much younger and more enthusiastic speakers on this topic, I will not um, stay here much longer today. Though our influence on the environment can be much more direct. Last spring, I decided to sail across across the Pacific Ocean to witness the changes we have caused in marine life as well as to the ecosystems in general on the different small island states. Amongst other things, I was looking for the plastic pollution we have heard so much about. Unfortunately, I found it as well. For me, the most present object on shores, a flip-flop became a new kind of symbol for the man-made pollution. Not because flip-flops were present in different sizes and conditions on the shores of the most isolated atolls and motus, and 
and not because the sheer amount of those flip-flops and the inspiration these had given to the local artists, but because it was a direct symbol of our deeds who live far, far away influencing people who live together with the nature and do not cause much pollution by themselves at all. Anyway, one can think that um, we are here, safe and sound, far, far away, but it's not true, unfortunately. Last summer, a Finnish friend of mine called Rufe, who is actually the youngest Finn to solo sail across the Atlantic Ocean, um, covered the same distance like, the like, like is the Atlantic, 2,700 nautical miles non-stop around the Baltics and took several samples of seawater on the way. Even though he didn't found any flip-flops, these samples he took were far from being clean from the plastic particles. We are connected. What we do or what we don't do will not influence only us, but our neighbors as well. We have several projects connecting us where we, you and me are responsible of the decisions made, where we as architects cannot step aside from the public dispute without expressing our arguments pro and con. We must carefully examine our needs and define what has to be expected result before we start to do anything with a potential impact to the nature. It is about time to become surgical. The success of any project depends on clear terms of reference. The terms of reference provide a lucid document which can be used to determine whether the result is a success or failure. The terms of reference carry great responsibility because they must not only consider the problems of the past and the present, but they must also be sustainable in the future. Terms of reference must be sensitive to cultural and environmental aims. Terms of reference must answer the question for whom and why. The most precious asset we as humans have is time. Time is the reason why we try to live closer to our workplace. Time is the reason why we tend to choose the quickest way to connect to any point of interest. Based on the studies conducted by Swedish transport planners, 100% of people are willing to make local trips up to one and a half hours daily. Up to 40% of people are willing to make a regional trip up to one and a half hours daily. And only 1% of the people are making trips longer than three hours. And these are not daily trips any longer, but these are planned trips. In other words, local trips one, up to one and a half hours are those what we are doing to go to groceries, to, to go to work, to, um, to go to school, local school, something like that. Um, one and a half hours, this is a business trip um, quite often. Um, this is going to the university, for instance, some vocation, going to the hospital. And three hours, um, these are, can also be a, um, work trips or going to the conference to Riga or something like that. These are the trips you are plan ahead. Now, you would like to take a group of people and measure the time which is needed for them to take contact with each other. By doing this and using the Newton's law, you can find the gravity of any given spot in a city. This formula here is a bit uh, uh, simplified and this is more exact, but I believe you got the point. And um, suddenly we have a tool. This theory itself is not so much new. New are its applications or 
mm, possibilities to apply this theory using the help of the big data. More and more databases are open to public use and we as city planners can take serious advantage out of it. To summarize this, in order to create something with the smallest environmental impact per influenced people, if we want to achieve the positive change in planning and get people out from their cars, for instance, we must diminish the travel time first. The result can be predicted by time space or city gravity calculations. If we want to lessen the environmental footprint, we must develop mainly rail transport with its own corridors, as light rail is faster in the cities than cars and buses, and interregional trains are faster than Lux Express buses, for instance. Due to their environmental impact, planes are only good for the long distance travels, really. Um, let me visualize it on a case study of Talsinki. As you know, there is a hot topic to connect Helsinki and Tallinn with a tunnel. One of the greatest spokespersons in that matter is um, Peter Westerbaka, a creator of the Angry Birds. The idea is not new. For almost a hundred years, there has been a vision of the bridge or a tunnel connecting Tallinn and Helsinki. The idea of permanent link that would open Finland up to Europe. Discussions so far have mainly been focused around the profitability of the carriage of goods. For the Finns, the advantage of the railway over the con currently used maritime transport is obvious. The advantage comes mostly from a reduction of in reloading time, which is costly. For example, machines manufactured in Finland would no longer have to be loaded onto trains, taken to the harbor, loaded onto ships, then taken to another harbor, where a third reloading onto the rail or lorry transport would then have to be take place. However, do we really need this railway tunnel if it's only for the transport of Finnish goods. In case of the project with such a great impact and cost, there has to be greater benefit as well. Despite of the repeated mentioning the Tallinn Helsinki as a twin city, unfortunately there are no steps in planning made at Tallinn site to enforce it yet makes you ask, where are the terms of reference? Learning from the experience of the breach linking Malmö and Copenhagen, it can be argued that the real triumph of this type of venture would be the birth of the Twin City. For this to be possible, fast, smooth connections between the two cities would be essential. In the context of globalized competition, what matters is the gravity defined in the density of the population and the time spent on connections, as we already established. The more people that are making swifter connections, the greater is the potential of the area. As we learned before, a local transport up to one and a half hours is what influences 100% of people and therefore having a biggest impact. This is what truly creates a unified urban area. For us Estonians, the tunnel between Tallinn and Helsinki should mean totally different shape, meaning larger inner city. It should make many new jobs and opportunities. The Vanda airport with its connections would be less than an hour away from central Tallinn. The world not only the city would look completely different for Estonians. What else? Of course, the shipping companies like Tallink would not do well as a result. They would have to switch over to only the carriage of goods, which would mean the large ships will move out from the Tallinn city to Muga and to Paldiski. 
the harbor in the Tallinn city center would only continue to service cruise ships and perhaps the Stockholm Perry line. When it comes to the urban space, the residents of Tallinn would gain a lot from this merger. The lorry traffic on Ahtri and Reidi Street through the city center would disappear. The old town and city center would finally be peaceful and naturally connected to the sea with marinas and beaches lining the seafront. There would be no longer a need for a huge shopping centers aimed mainly at tourists unsuitable for the city fabric at the seaside area. The erosion problems created by high-speed crafts on the beaches of the Tallinn Bay would be solved immediately. The sea would be much safer for small ships. To summarize, the birth of the Twin City must be the main objective in terms of reference. Only after that, the, the traditional aspects as transportation of goods or um, backup airport for Wanda, etc., could step in. But how to create the Twin City? There is a bad news. It is not only enough to simply build a tunnel under the Gulf and start to enjoy the solution for everything. When the bridge between Malvan, Malmö and Copenhagen was initially built, there were a great number of problems in getting in it up and running. The trouble was that the two ends of the bridge were not sufficiently connected to the existing residential networks. Essentially, both cities had to be dragged along to meet the bridge ends. Existing links had to be rebuilt and people and focal points in the urban environment had to be moved to different locations. At the end, after all, they have started to design a new metro line to fix the shortcomings. We must learn from this because reconfiguring the city could end up costing much more than the tunnel itself, not to mention the environmental footprint would be huge. Here is where the time-space calculations and peak data can come to help us. So, what we have done here, together with my colleague Jan Jagomäki, was we took the density and location of Tallinn people added all major public transport corridors and visualized the gravity of different parts of the Tallinn. Then we looked at the three different ideas which are existing nowadays, how to connect the people from Helsinki to the people of Tallinn, measuring the potential, pot potential um, of every spot in the city. First, we looked what will happen if we will implement the transport, or should we say cargo planner's idea to make the first stop into VMC. Um, suddenly, you can see that the picture comes much less brighter. And actually, the reason is really simple because the, the stop in VMC, which is right, like on this right-hand upper corner where the um, in the middle of the private residence area with small roads around uh, is so mm, miserably connected to the Tallinn city center that it actually takes the power off even from the city center, meaning that all the power to rebuild the city would have to go towards the VMC in order to achieve um, the connections. The second analyze was run what will happen if we will implement um, Westerbakas. Peter Westerbakas idea to make in Tallinn only one stop to, to Ulemiste. It's uh, as the pixelation is quite quite loose here, it's actually it's hard to see, but uh, Ulemiste is close to our airport. 
And um, that stop over there would create a huge peak on this uh, area. Unfortunately, it doesn't grow wider because in, in one side it is limited with the airstrip, in another side it is um, limited with the railroad and, and huge um, logistic um, road um, crossing. And, and again, what happens is that in Ulamis there will be a huge peak, but Tallinn city center will suffer from that. So the third analyze was done on finding the ideal stop. The stop with a potential to create the highest gravity and to influence positively the biggest number of the people. The stop being with the smallest environmental impact per people in calculations. The answer was sort of predictable. The stop has to be in central of the Tallinn, near to the existing transport hubs. All other solutions will require a massive rebuild in Tallinn infrastructure and housing, increasing the environmental footprint massively. In the city centre, it would be only natural for a stop to be built on the ground, of course. Our analyse requires a re-examination of the current plans for the linking of the tunnel and rail Baltic. Locating the first stop at Ulemiste would topple the estimated travel time to Helsinki because you would need to factor in the time what it takes for people to get to Ulemiste from their doorstep. Creating the first stop in VMC would render the idea of the Twin City into nil. There is still time to make changes into plans. There is still time to see the bigger picture to come up with balanced terms of reference and only then begin to execute the project. The attitude of let's do it first and then see how it works out will not bring us any closer to Europe, nor will it bring Europe to us. Oh, another hot topic we share, the rail Baltic. The rail Baltic in Estonia is a perfect sample of what will happen if there are no terms of reference. The general question amongst the public in Estonia is, does anyone know a single person who can explain why we need the rail Baltic railway line to Europe? Despite all the time spent and large amount of work done, public discussions are yet to answer the question of why we need to draw a line across Estonia, which would seemingly divide the country into two. Looking at the Rail Baltic website, one cannot glean much about in their terms of reference. The emphasis are instead on the flow of passenger in the Tallinn Riga section plus some additional vague phrases about the carriage of goods and the development of tourism, which do not sound particularly convincing. So the question remains, for whom and for what purpose is all of this needed? The situation has been a great fertilizer for different post-true era speculations, partly fueled by road transport businesses partly from NIMBY effects, but frankly, mostly by the sheer concern of people, which are caused by unanswered questions by the developer. For Estonians, the Red Baltic has been a hard nut to swallow, especially as the behavior of the local management of the project remembers the old Soviet saying, where the mind ends, the railway starts. What do our people say? They want the rail Baltic to go through Tartu. Yes, it is longer, but they believe it would have more users. They want it to go along existing corridor. Yes, that means the sp speed will drop significantly 
and influences negatively more homes by the track. But it would be more kind to the forests and people could potentially get more stops in villages. Some people don't want railway at all, as we all have cars anyway. They want better roads instead. There are much more of those questions, but these are like the major ones. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer to those questions. But we have done some calculations on our own. Besides possibly military needs, which I don't know anything of, the only reason seems to be a need to make Europe stronger by linking its people quicker. In other words, enlarge the potential in global economic competition. We have connections, but these are slow. Even if we will build all our roads to be like autobahns in Germany, it will still be a lot slower than average modern day train in Europe. The environmental impact would be greater as well. Together with my colleagues, we have run several simulations on Rail Baltic. We have learned from our calculations that both stops in Pärnu as well as in Tartu are weakening the project, as the main benefit comes from connecting Tallinn and Riga. The stop in Tartu weakens the project more as mere 50,000 additional people from Tartu in comparison with Pärnu does not wait out one hour, long, lo one hour longer trip for one million potential users. We must remember that one and a half hour trip is still considered regional and will influence 40% of the people as a close to three hour long trip is interregional and influences just 1% already. The quick link between Tallinn and Riga could have created a totally new spatial context. For instance, attending at this conference would have required five hours less from me and had a smaller environmental footprint as well. This is the European map as we have used to, to look at it with the distances in kilometers. Now, if we will take it time-wise by rail transport, this is sort of the map what actually is looking at the hours. So what is rail politic could do is bringing us a bit closer to the Europe, not as close as Europe itself is tied together. But unfortunately, lack of the solid terms of reference has caused already too many compromises. One straight line could to be used, for instance, for a hyperlink or even more modern technologies has already been redrawn to be a snake-like trail between different interests in Estonia. But leaving all those um, problems in rail politic behind, my personal favorite slide is what will happen to the Finnish people as soon as they will be connected to the Europe by rail and with the, tun uh, with the Tallinn by tunnel. Pew. To summarize once more, in everything we do, we must reduce our footprint per person or per user as much as possible. In cities, it means better public transport. In regional and interregional transport, it means better rail connections. Let's value our time. Thank you. <laughs>